Hello! In this video, we are going to be talking about piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are the functions that are created from pieces. And actually, they have lots of applications in real life. For example, your utilities usually are piecewise. Because if this month you're paying $50 for electricity, and the next month you use too much AC, then it's going to be $150, and so on and so on. So, when we ask you to graph a piecewise function, basically we want you to understand that the function is uh, glued or connected with the several different functions. And I like to teach it this way. I will name each of them. So, the first function, f of x, will be just minus 1 if input x is less than 0. The second one, it will be 2 if x is 0. And the third case, it will be 3 if x is greater than 0. Then, here is my x and y x, uh, axis, x, f of x. And then, usually, even if, I don't, if I'm not asked to sketch the graph, I still do a little diagram. I can see that something is happening with the input 0, and everything is changed before 0, at 0, and after 0. Before zero, case number one happens. So the function number one will be before I'm approaching zero. At zero, case number two. And then after zero, case number three. But now we actually can sketch the graph for this function. So here is my zero. And I know that zero will divide the function into three different cases. So when x is less than zero, here it is, I will be using case number one and for case number one i'm working with f of x equals minus one how to sketch the graph for a case like this f of x equals minus one that's the constant function i just need to find input minus one uh, no it's going to be output minus one and this function has a stable or basically constant output with the height minus one so the height will be always minus 1. Now, let's pay attention. Since I'm looking at strict inequality less than 0, then I'm never actually reaching 0. So I need to put a circle over here, indicating that at 0, the function is not at the height minus 1. But what happens at 0? At 0, the function jumps to height 2. So I will find height 1, then height 2, here it is. And then I will fill in the box, or fill in this circle over here, indicating that the function, the graph of the function jumped, the height of it jumped from minus 1 to 2 at 0. Then, when x is greater than 0, the height becomes 3. So we're working with the function f of x equals 3. Then it means I need to find the height 3, and since I already know it's strict inequality, I will put a circle over here, and then draw a constant line like this for all inputs x after 0. So when x is greater than 0, f of x equals 3 happens. When x is less than 0, f of x equals minus 1 happens. And then what happens at 0? At 0, f of x just equals 2. That's just a point. And that's how you graph it. Now, what if we don't ask you to graph anything, but we just ask you to find the values? Because if we need to use previous example to find some kind of values, for example, what is f of x at negative 5? Can you guys tell me? So, talking about previous example. Example, if now from the graph we ask you to find f of minus 5, you either can do it from the graph or from the expression of the function. So from the graph, I know that minus 5 is somewhere over here. And at that input, the height is minus 1. It's a constant height, minus 1. Or I also can see it this way. Here is where my input is less than 0. x is minus 5 is located on the case 1. Case 1 is over here. 
So the answer is minus 1. With this example, it's a little bit more complicated. But we still can learn it. Not, not a big deal. Let's see what's going on. So suppose the function is defined. And we have, this, in this case, two cases. Case number 1. When x is not 2, it's a linear function minus 3 quarters x minus 1. When x is minus 2, then it's just number 2. So again, the diagram would look like this. Something happens at negative 2. When x is negative 2, then the function is 2. And actually, it's case 2, right? So case 2 at negative 2. But on all, in all other cases, when x is less than minus 2 or greater than minus 2, that means it's not minus 2. Case number 1 happens. So on both sides, we have equation minus 3 quarters x minus 1, but at minus 2, we have just 2. So now, knowing this idea, let's find these values. How to find f of negative 4? I will be writing this way. Which kind of case should I choose based on the diagram and naming each function 1 and 2? Minus 4, where does it uh, happen? Minus 4 happens somewhere over here. This is case number 1. So minus 4 is not negative 2. That's why I will be choosing this first equation to plug minus 4 in. So it's going to be minus 3 quarters. And I'll even indicate for you. I'm choosing equation number 1. And I'm plugging minus 4, substituting minus 4 into x in, in minus 3 quarters times minus 4 minus 1. And the answer is 2. How do I know? Minus 4 and minus 4 gives me minus 4 over minus 4 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. What happens at f minus 2? Well, f minus 2 is exactly over here. So that's going to be case number 2. It's this one. At minus 2, when x is minus 2, y or output is 2. What happens at 1? 1 happens on the, let me choose the color blue. 1 happens somewhere over here. So that's the case on the right from negative 2. But it's still case number 1 because it's basically not minus 2. And it means I'm going to substitute into three, negative 3 quarters x minus 1. What I'm going to substitute? Exactly 1. And the answer is minus 3 quarters minus 1. 1 is 4 over 4. So the answer is minus 7 over 4. Done. And this is how you work with piecewise functions, based on the graph or based on the expressions, or both. Don't be afraid, just logically think what is going on. Imagine cases in your mind, and, or maybe build a nice diagram the way I do it. Uh, students tell me it's actually pretty helpful to have a diagram like this. Hope it was helpful, and see you in my next video.